Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? So welcome for all of you to all of you who are going to be present right here, right now. And when you come in, by all means, just uh, let me know. Hello, Rupak. How are you? Long time, no see, no chat, no talk. Hope uh, the kids are doing fine and that you are doing well as well. Um, today is September 24th. We've got one week left for this month. And believe it or not, I was walking down the street and went to the store. Uh, guess what? They have all the Christmas stuff out. It's too fast. It's too much. I feel like, I mean, September, we haven't even celebrated, what, October for Halloween. And here, all the stores are pushing us to Christmas. Um, so what does that mean to me? Hi, Mark. How are you? My favorite. Uh, it's like you, uh, you are my one of my biggest fans, and I thank you for being present at all times. So are you ready for Christmas? Are you even ready for Halloween? I'm not big on Halloween. Uh, I'm, I'm not big on dressing up. I, it, it, Halloween, actually bugs in Halloween and skeletons are not something that um, I go for. Not even dressing up. So, but walking down the, uh, the stores uh, with all this Christmas stuff, it just affected me in a way. You know, there's a lot of people that talk, talk about the holiday blues. And when they feel lonely or they are sad, when they have you no know, family or friends or things that they don't do during the holidays. And not everyone is happy for the holidays, for Christmas. Not everyone celebrates Christmas. Not any everyone celebrates Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. So all these celebrations that are to come. And the stores pushing us towards Christmas, it's like creating this bubble of, I'm putting you into depression or into that blues time faster. And it's like reality. Let us breathe this moment. Let us breathe and be present. It's, I feel like, um, I'm, re I'm not ready for Christmas, it's too early. Exactly, exactly. Uh, it's, it's like saying to everyone, why don't you buy, get an app so you feel calm, so you feel present. Do meditation for you to find this presence, but walk through the stores so you are three months ahead of yourself and you are buying for Christmas, you are buying gifts and think about all the gifts you are supposed to buy. Uh, it's like we are bombarded. We are overwhelmed with people pushing and telling us how to feel, what to do, uh, where to go. Come on. Um, I... I remember there was, uh, oh my God, what was his name? He used to say, give me a break, right? So that's what I felt like. I walked through the store to buy something that I needed. I went straight in, which is not me. I, I walked out. I walked out because I felt so overwhelmed because of and, and they're packed it's like aisle after aisle after aisle and so i don't know how you feel do you feel the same way do you feel as if you are being told by the media by the stores by this entire marketing thing to get ready for three months from now not even halloween three months from now, end of the year. So in a way, what it does, it's energetically, spiritually, 
uh, physically, I felt more contracted. Uh, I felt tense, not realizing that it is because of my environment. For those of you who know me, who know me well, you know I cannot stand cold. I'm not a hot-blooded person, so when it becomes when the weather is cold or I walk somewhere that is cold, it's like my entire body goes into this clench. So environment has a big effect on us. Cold, hot affects us. For women who are going through menopause, right? They understand what I'm talking about. They go through this heat wave and it affects not only their body, they go into sweats, uh, they become moody, they become, it's like hyperventilating, and men have the same effects also, but they may not be as in touch or expressing it. They express it differently. Maybe they need to go on a golf course, maybe they need to do a golf tournament, they, they go and play uh, a game, uh, a game. Right, and it could be any game. It could be tennis. It could be basketball. It could be uh, golf or bowling. Um, they go on the treadmill for hours. They go to the gym. Women who are perspiring and having a menopause and effects like that, there is no way that they can leave at that moment and do something about it. They're just going through it, and most times. Unfortunately, uh, everyone can see, everyone can see this transition. So what does transition of physical, mental, emotional, and environment have to do with my talk today? It affects us. It affects us. It creates stress. It creates stressors. It creates um, internal stress. And when we feel as if people are looking at us during menopause, um, I fortunately I have already passed that stage. I don't get to to go through the menopausal stages of the heat wave and everything. Yes, I have gone through it, but it didn't affect me as much as some of my friends go through. And as I was saying, cold affects me, so it creates stress for me. There are places, work environments that people are like literally working for hours and hours under fluorescent light and they never get to see sunlight by the time they leave work it's already dusk or getting dark that affects us it affects our psyche it affects our energy it affects our being playful being happy being joyful this morning, I stopped at a store as I'm coming out. I had to buy a, um, a screen protector for my phone. And uh, as I'm paying, I said, good morning. How are you doing? And she's like, well, you're bright and happy. It's like, wow, being happy, being playful, being bright and happy is not something people are used to. So... Going back to these aisles of Christmas and everything, I don't know, no matter how much I love Christmas, which I do, I love Thanksgiving more than Christmas because to me, it's that time of giving thanks. It's time of being grateful. It's time that we truly become one and take a core, take uh, an accountability within ourselves in our life and the people in our life although we are supposed to do that every day for those who pray for those who meditate yeah believe it or not last week um i took a hiatus although i did show up on hill talk tuesday last week and if you were present hello derek Mm, can't wait to hug you on Friday. Hello, Sanaz. How are you? So last week, if you came on, I did my Hill Talk Tuesday from Puerto Vallarta. Ah, oh, I needed to get away. 
I had not taken a vacation for four years, right? And I had to do as I preach. It's take time, it take me time. I've done small little things, but I had not taken five days away. So I wanted to go and get away uh, and be present. Hmm. The talk for today, being present, being present physically, mentally, and emotionally. So I got away to Puerto Vallarta. Hmm. The first two and a half days, it was absolutely amazing, beautiful, sunny, bright, happy, happy. I was at Hayat Ziba, a great place, all inclusive, great service, wonderful hotel. I got to have a corner unit uh, room, plush, king size, everything. Everything was amazing, other than the mosquitoes who got me the first day. So, because I didn't know anyone, it was a beautiful time just to reflect and write, veg out, uh, eat healthy, which I did the entire week. And on the third day, I got to meet some incredible couple, two wonderful couple, Armenian couple. And I got to, in the swimming pool, this infinity swimming pool, I got to meet three beautiful couples, one with their son which we spend that evening going to an excursion together. And on the boat, we saw these clouds coming in and we knew the thunder and storm is coming, but still we thought, hey, it's an adventure. We're going for an adventure, might as well make this an into an adventure. And we did, it was adventurous. <laughs> We're coming back of thunder tornadoes and rain and there were few people who put the life jacket on thinking what if hmm the what if so the what if of how to cope with stress the environment knowing we're on a big boat with 200 people about 200 people in there and everyone is thinking is this going to get worse the water was coming into the boat the kids put the life jacket on and there were people who were you know thinking about what if so here's my question to you how do you cope with stressors like that how do you cope with an environment that you are not very comfortable it could be rain and tornado and thunder. How do you de-stress during times like that? How do you cope with when you go through a time that into a store that it's already creating this environment that takes you from the present into the future? And what I did and is with the people that I was with, I said, what if this is exactly what we are to embrace? And they all looked at me. And that's the beauty of it. What if this is the exact moment for us to be more aware and appreciative? Appreciative of our, our life, all of us that we are together. So we held hands. We held hands. And at that moment, the crew came and started an entertainment. They had the music going on and we were all singing. The entire boat started singing, not row, row down the road, right? Just the opposite. It was the best thing that happened. They even did a Michael Jackson entertainment. They did a uh, kiss and they had the, uh, their guitars up. We were singing country and some people didn't appreciate country, but we started singing Garth Brooks. So the entire thing from being scared, panicking, we dropped it from, it was like a pause on what is happening around us, even though the boat was moving, we could hear the thunder, but we were all together as one. And that brought a unity. 
it brought a sense of comfort, a sense of sense of security, a sense of oneness. You see, at times of panic and anxiety, the best thing to do is pause and then drop into the moment, being aware of what is going on and surrounds you. So if I feel stressed or anxious is pause, swallow my saliva, drop into my body, drop into the moment, drop into my surrounding, and then become aware of my feelings. Am I anxious? Am I alone? Am I safe? And all that, once we become aware, that's when we can do something about it. Because if we are not aware of environment, if we are not aware of our own sense of security, physically, mentally, and emotionally, that's when we go into that panic. That is when we become more overwhelmed. And once we became safe, and everyone started singing and laughing. Next thing we know, that half an hour boat ride, it was so much effortless and easier. Next thing you know, we're at the dock, we're docking, and everyone is coming off. Hi, Harry John. Hi, Sonas. Mm. Yes, you do sing. Listen to music, dance if possible. Exactly. So, the next thing that happened, the next day, we had more thunder and rain. And I'm sure you already saw. And if you didn't, I went, we had this window of no rain. And I decided I'm going to go to the ocean side. And I'm going to walk, walk on the beautiful sandy beach. As I'm walking, the hotel had great team people. And one of the guys, Arturo, came running. It's like, oh, Miss uh, Senorita, Senorita, Senorita Lisa, because they already get to know the names. Do you want your pina colada? I said, hold the pina colada. Can you take a picture of me? And while I'm on the beach, she says, of course, of course, CCC. So he takes my camera and starts taking and he says go to the water and as I started going and kicking and jumping next thing you know my beautiful glasses fly into the ocean <laughs> I don't know has it ever happened to you or not it happened and flying my glasses went and I turned around I didn't even know about it. So I'm doing all the poses and everything and we are done. He says, ready for Pina Galina? I said, yes. And I put my hand over there to pick up my glasses. It's not there. And I'm like, Arturo, my glasses, it's gone. So we started walking and walking. Next thing I realized, well, the waves took them away. Mm. The waves took them away, right? You think I would stress out. I started laughing, laughing and laughing and laughing. And it became more joy for me thinking, okay, what is it that I'm not supposed to see? Or, ha, ah, I'm supposed to be more grateful and playful. So we started taking more pictures and more playfulness. That's when the rain started hitting. And of course I had the camera, I mean, my phone with me and he's got it. And it started raining and raining, more thunder. And the phone got soaked. So we started running back into the safety and everything by the time we got into safety, just like that. I didn't realize then, but the water got into underneath the screen into my phone. Two hours later, I can't take pictures. <laughs> it's fogged up. I can't see the screen. There's people texting. And I'm saying this because it became more funny. It became funny because I took the entire thing as a metaphor of I had to stop seeing 
right? Stop listening. I did not, I could not connect. And stop texting and talking. Wow, you know the three monkeys? I see nothing, I hear nothing, I say nothing. And that's what I did for the next two days. I vegged, nurtured, journaled, and connected with people with no phone. All the rest of the pictures were by someone else. So I arrived to the airport, got to the airport, and I can't call anyone. I can't call Lyft. And I got a taxi and I came home. So at times of stress, we pause, we take note, and we drop into what can I do? And I like to call it, so what? So what if that happened? Now what? Now what? What do you do now? What do I do now? I make the best of it. You know, this thing about if you've got extra lemons, you make lemonade. So that's what you do. So here is your way. If you find yourself, amen, Mark. If you find yourself at times of stress, physically, mentally, emotionally, environmental, or financial, pause. Drop into the moment. Become aware of your feelings. And then say to yourself, so what? Right? Better yet? Now what? Now what? What can I do now? What can I say now? How can I make the best of my situation? And that's how we get rid of worries. Because what are worries? Creating negative uh, energy, negative thought, negative ideas for something that is in the future and it has not happened right here, right now. Make that worries into concern and then say, now what? And do something about it. With that, recognizing that at all situations, you can be in control. You can walk out of the store and say, not yet. Or go in, get what you need, and get out. At times that you feel out of control, be present, sing, dance, play music, or walk out somewhere that it's sunny and bright, or find a metaphor that will shift your stressors, shift where you are to another time and a place. And that's what we do through hypnotherapy. I help my clients, literally, this is what we do. It's like a recorder. We rewind to what we need to help with their issues, their problem, uh, what is it that they came in for, and then forward, forward, forward to the present, right? And then play. Once we make all the edits and changes from the background, from rewinding, finding it, editing, and then we forward back to here and now, and then push play, right? So it's the same thing. Pause is the stop button. And then we rewind to our subconscious mind, to another time and a place. We do all the editing that needs to be, shifting through metaphors, verbiage, and feelings. And then we forward it back to the present, the here and now. And once we accept it, boom, we push play. So that from now on, we move forward in life with the new messaging, affirmations, feelings, behaviors, and thought process. I hope you, uh, I hope all this message helps you and has been beneficial to you. 
And if you believe this message has been beneficial to you, by all means, please share it. Just click share it. You can find me at healwithin.com. I am on Instagram uh, with Lisa Bubari or Heal Within. And I look forward, truly, I truly believe to heal within, heal within starts from inside. And that's where transformation begins. There is no way we can change the environment. I can't change the store. I don't have that much power. The store does not belong to me. But what I can do is change me. I can shift where I am and walk out and shift my perspective, my feelings, and what I want to achieve in life. Until next week, I look forward to coming and being with you again and again. By the way, just a note, starting October, I'm going to be doing more interviews, bringing you more information, solid uh, information, people who are going to bring more, uh, not only affirmation, inspiration, motivation, but clarity uh, in health, in finance, in business. I can't wait until I start my interviews starting next week. So if you know of anyone that you would like me to interview or who would like to be on the uh, Heal Talk Tuesday, Lisa Bubari Show, by all means, let me know. I look forward to being with you and again and again. Mm -hmm. Until next week, God bless you and may the universal light surround you. Bye-bye.